Rama's last question was to do with how all this apparent diversity arises from the one infinite consciousness. Vasishta continued, I shall again declare to you the way in which the one infinite consciousness has come to appear as the jiva and all the rest of it. So we've got the jiva, which is the individual, and all the rest of it, the world, and so on. And when we talk about this one infinite consciousness, it sounds cosmic, and it is cosmic, but the only way to make sense of any of this is to relate it to what is happening right here and now, because this is what it's talking about. I mentioned in the previous chapter how the study of scripture is only valid if it acts as a mirror and it turns you your attention round to your own nature. And this is how we have to try to approach this and not get caught up in notions, it doesn't matter how cosmic they are, but uh, to see what these notions are saying, what, what they're actually pointing out within our own being. You see in the ocean that it is tranquil in places and agitated in other places. Even so, the infinite consciousness seems to embrace diversity in some places, though it in itself is non-dual. It is natural for the omnipotent infinite consciousness to manifest in all its infinite glory. And that is a description of what is happening right now. The omnipotent infinite consciousness, which is simply consciousness, it is awareness. It is your awareness. You might think, oh, there's nothing omnipotent about my awareness. There's nothing infinite about my awareness. <laughs> well, you're aware of an infinite number of things that's going on all the time. And if you're aware of something, is that awareness different from what you're aware of? So you can be aware of an infinite number of things, and these things are doing an infinite number of things. They're doing an infinite number of things. Um, all the power that is happening is within your awareness. It's, it's cr the whole physical universe, the whole phenomenal universe is being, this is according to the scientific point of view, is being created moment to moment deep within your mind. I mean that's just the scientific point of view. Um, pointing out the wonder of of your mind. Uh, it's consciousness that's doing this. It can't really be anything else. So this is what we've got, this incredible explosion of phenomena going on all around us, whether it's just within the confines of your own room, your own body, or if you're outside walking uh, in the city or in the countryside or by the sea, um, all these infinite phenomena going on, this is the infinite consciousness manifesting itself in all its infinite glory. It's just the everyday in other words. This manifestation of the omnipotence of infinite consciousness enters into an alliance with time, space and causation, which are indispensable to their manifestation. Time, space and consciousness. Time gives us past and future. Space gives us distance. And causation gives us cause and effect. These are the principles which allow us to order things, um, so that we can communicate and all the rest of it. Thence arose the infinite names and forms. This is a cognitive process at work. Infinite names and forms, we identify forms or there's the identification of forms going on, names are given to them and we can 
therefore talk about aspects of the field of experiencing. All these things are notions and uh, it's by virtue of these notions that we communicate and that we can play with the world basically. But all these apparent manifestations are in reality non-different from the infinite consciousness. That aspect of this infinite consciousness which relates itself to the manifestation of the names and forms and thus to time, space and causation is known as the knower of the field or the witness consciousness. The body is the field. That which knows this field inside out and in all its aspects is the knower of the field or witness consciousness. Now this is the first time we've come across this term witness consciousness and it's a term which is used in, in Christ, Christian spirituality and uh, I don't think it's got quite the same meaning here though it's not quite as sublime perhaps as what the witness is in the cr Christian spirituality let's see if we can tease out the meaning of it here It's the aspect of the infinite consciousness which relates itself to the manifestation of the names and forms. So really it's, it's really that, it's really the beginning of the cognitive process. It's that inclination to want to understand. It's known as the knower of the field. I've often referred to the only sort of the simplest definition of what is happening as the field of experiencing. It's, it's taken the field of experiencing and within that field of experience there's, a, there's something which wants to understand it, which wants to make sense, which wants to comprehend it. This is the witness, this is the witness consciousness, it's the it's the idea that there's or the sense or intuition that there's something here looking out there or experiencing something out there and the body is the field so the body becomes well the body is the uh, the abode of the senses it's the uh, it gives us the uh, terms for splitting up the experiencing into various sensory modes touch, sound and all the rest of it, touch, hearing and so on. <clears throat> so this is the, the seed, this is the seed of the cognitive process. This witness consciousness becomes involved in the latent predispositions and develops the ego sense. When this ego sense generates notions and intentions within itself, it is known as the intellect. As the thinking instrument, it is known as the mind. When the intelligence gets further modified or perverted, it becomes the senses. All of these constitute the body. Just as a fruit undergoes various changes in size, colour, etc. as it matures, the same consciousness undergoes these apparent changes as the ignorance grows deeper and deeper. It gets more and more solid. <coughs> the foolish person then abandons all right thinking or inquiry into the truth and voluntarily embraces ignorance as bliss. Caught in its own trap of various activities and of identification of oneself as their doer, he undergoes endless suffering which is self-imposed and self-willed. O Ram, in this world the cause of all misfortunes is only the mind which is full of sorrow and grief, desire and delusion. Forgetful of self-knowledge, it generates desire and anger evil thoughts and cravings which throw the person into the fire of sense objects. O Ram, rescue this mind from the mire of ignorance. O Rama, he indeed is a demon in human form who is not distressed by the impure state of the mind caused by altern alternating good and evil thoughts and who is subjected to old age, death and despair. <clears throat> 